Hi everyone and welcome back. This is a new mini playlist and in this playlist we are talking about how we can deploy a React package, a Node.js package and Nest.js package to the GitHub. So we are going to create our private packages like a Node.js library package, React UI component package and Node.js utility package and then we are going to use those utility packages in the external projects. So this is a mini playlist because I wanted to cover all these things together. So there will be a couple of uh, videos in this. So I have already covered uh, one video where I was uh, publishing a simple Node.js uh, package. Right now, let's see what all we can publish to the GitHub or NPM. So this is the NPM repo, this is the GitHub repo and this is the GitLab repository. Right. And we can publish our npm package or you can say the library either to the npm where you can get through npmgs.com right this is how you will do it if you are publishing as a, a public package or if you are having a private then only with the npm npmrc you can get that here this is a github and this is gitlab so GitHub and GitLab also provides you this packages system where you can publish your library and in your organization only you can access that package. So that package can be a, let's say, React uh, reusable components, a set of components, or you can say, you can also publish a Nest.js module or a simple Node.js utility uh, library. So what are the examples here? What all we can publish? I can publish a simple React UI selector component or carousel scroll or any kind of a custom UI component and we can also publish nest.js package which deals with the send grid to send emails you can publish simple node.js uh, package Where you can define how to interface with a third party service, which is indirectly using XGOs, right? How to interface with the third party APIs where you need an API token, access key, secret key, and all those things. So, all those things you can bundle in a reusable package. So, let's say if you have multiple teams, they can reuse these packages either from NPM, either from GitHub packages, or GitLab packages. We just need to have is okay, this is my external project. And what you need to do is this is my app. You just need to add NPMRC and you are fine. You can just use all these. You can read the packages published to all these repositories. Okay. So this is how things really works. Here you need to have a dot NPMRC in the system where you are actually pulling and it, it contains NPM token, which you can get from either GitHub, GitLab or NPM. Okay, so we have already seen this uh, thing of publishing a simple Node.js package. Now we will try to talk about, let's say I'm building a React UI library or I just want to publish one React component, maybe a simple React counter component that I want to make available for the world. So anybody can download using npm install minus minus save my package name and they can see this counter component on their UI on their application so that is the objective so it has uh, lots of steps you will start from basic and here what i'm going to do is this is because i'm going to use only same repository here i have created uh, these three branches through these three branches you can get the code okay nice.js package node.js package and react ui package i don't want to create a uh, three different repositories for it so for now because we are on the Nest.js package. I will do get checkout React UI package. And for this, I am going to del delete all those things. I will start from scratch. I mean, this is not the, not the right way of uh, using Git. I'm like cleaning every other file and then instantiating my stuff. Okay, but that's for just demo purpose. So this thing we are going to do from the basic. So what all steps we are going to perform? So like prepare project. 
then we'll configure git all the basic things i mean i'm not going to talk about these things in the detail eslint you can set up you can set up tests because you're also going to write some tests for the component right and then configure package json for publishing and then write your library write your component we can set up automated tests and then publish this publish to github as npm package basic things we are going to do so we are going to start from very basic we will just start with npm in it that will set up our project and i will just set a set this name okay name will be tk sharma this is my package name and rest i will just skip so i got package json and this is my package name okay now we can create a source folder and then we also need to install all the dependencies right npm install minus minus save because this is what you are doing so you need to install react react dom and typescript libraries react react dom typescript and types react so i got some dependencies added so we need to also see like what this dependency is and how we are adding them so these should not be dependencies these should be added as a dev dependencies right because you are going to use this in the react application type script you don't need in the final build so i will just change it to let me just change it to minus minus c minus dev dev dependencies and we are good right next thing is we got the we need to create a tsconfig.json because it's a typescript react uh, component and to build it we need a tsconfig.json so i will just copy my basic tsconfig base tsconfig file it has the basic things okay what it is doing is exclude include source and uh, root directory source this is the output directory esm so we are going to create the output of the react package into es6 and common js because you might remember that when you want to import any package you can do either like this import package from tk sharma react package or you also want to provide a system okay package equal to require in both the ways you want uh, users to access your package so you need to provide a compatibility in your package so that if anybody is using common js they should be able to import it that way if anybody is using es6 i mean we use es6 only these days but you should provide both compiler options module lib root directory and strict true for the compiler check jsx is react include exclude output directory and we can just create a readme file also we will add some instructions now we will create our react application so in a source folder we can create a folder component components i need to add uh, i think git ignore also because it is showing lots of files for git I think it's already there. Let's add node modules, build this. Okay. Now my component should be very simple because it's the demo we are doing. I will just create a app dot tsx and my component will be look like because I already have imported React, so I should be able to import React. from react and i can also import use state oh, sorry for that react will be imported like this and use state is 
now i will just write a simple component and i will be using all the conditions like what all props we can pass for this component so props is a number okay and i am going to create my component simple counter component which i can also copy and paste but let's write it so this is taking a props and what is a prop inside prop uh, it's taking value and default initialization is a counter will be zero and it is assigned with the props the type for this is a props and our error function so this is the argument and this is our error function and here we are going to define our component okay this is the default argument so initialize like this okay now i can just use i mean i don't write a react a lot set counter so we are just using hook counter my counter and set uh, use state this is as the default hook and we are initializing this with a value which we are getting as a props const on minus i mean this is a simple function which is taking argument here we are going to set counter with the current value minus 1 so whatever the value we have value minus 1 so on plus similarly on plus and we are going to return a simple gsx so on minus on plus and this is the component we have created and i will just export this component so i'm just doing export default either you can do a export a particular class or a component and here i'm doing a default export my counter so this is the just a react component which i have created and inside index.ts so inside source folder we can create index.ts because you can write multiple component okay and here i can import that import my counter component app.tsx and then you can also export it from here why we have created these two files because you can create multiple component and from here you can import them in the index.ts and make them exportable so whoever is going to consume this will be importing these things like this import my comp counter from pk sharma react package okay this is the consumer side who is going to use it so this is our simple component okay now we can just add a script inside script packageation script let's say what do we have test so we need to have a build script here which can be simply tsc because it's a type script and we can just run this by npm run build that our component is building successfully or not and you can see inside this we got the index.d.ts this is our component and this is how our component look like okay so i just created a build for the component and we are able to do it so folder this should be appended all the compiled code yes you can see there is a esm folder which i have created which is talking about es6 so we can also have es7 cgs cgs is a common js where you will be doing a require esm is for es6 components where you will be importing this library using import okay now i can already config uh, we already have a git configured git ignore do we need anything else this to build everything is there now if we can also configure eslint because we are writing a library so we need to follow some standards right so these are the eslint uh, libraries you can add i mean we are using npm install minus minus cu dev and we can add all these eslint libraries 
ESLint TypeScript parser. Uh, overriding peer dependencies, React package found ESLint 8.1. That should be fine. So now we have all the required dependencies. What happens is sometimes you also need to keep your package updated. Because let's say if I'm publishing this package now, here onwards there will be ESLint version and your main project might be using some another ESLint version. So then there is a peer dependency mismatch issue. So always keep your package updated this way. And I can just add ESLint RC. So if you already have your default setup where you have defined how the ESLint RC looks like for the React package, because in the create react app we don't create all those things because create react app always manages all those things but here like eslint recommended we already have added all these things these are the eslint eslint typescript parser eslint plugin and this is my eslint rc and i can also add the eslint ignore that will tell me okay these files you don't need to run eslint on when i run eslint it will not be running lint on these particular files and then I can add a script for the lint which is NP and now I can try running this npm run lint it's going to use this eslint rc file to validate the validate the code okay now we can also configure a prettier so these are like very basic steps how we do it configure prettier is simple we can install the packages for that npm install minus minus save dev and for prettier you can just use in eslint config prettier because prettier has a plugin with uh, eslint eslint config prettier now we have prettier and then prettier rc.json file either you can create a prettier rc or make it as a json file and the basic steps basic things which so every project has all these configurations so i'm not going into much these are ESLint RC options, what is allowed, what is not allowed, when to throw error. So these are the rules. If you are violating the hooks rule, I will show the error. If there is an exclusive dependencies you are missing while defining the React hooks, I will give you the warning and these are off already. Okay, now I can run prettier also. So the prettier also has a script. So there is a lint. Lint is using ESLint and prettier is using the code formatting. So there is a difference in both of them. Prettier runs the formatting of the code styles like single quotes, double quotes. Lint runs the validation rules of the TypeScript code based on ESLint RC. And now uh, we can just run npm run prettier. I mean, these are already uh, in my setup so i'm just skipping all these steps and writing directly with you if there is an error it will also fix that so there is already everything is covered so now in the package json we have a build lint and prettier now we can also because we are going to write some tests very basic tests uh, for this component so we need to add some dev dependencies we are going to use a react testing library because we are writing a component npm install minus minus save dev so what all we have json just mock just and ts just i think something is deprecated here also i think we don't need a live all these libraries because react testing library you just need to provide a, a component tests which can be simple easy and we need to write a js config dot json i mean i will try to update this thing like we just need a ts uh, I mean just config and we don't need all these libraries I guess but uh, for now just so this is my thgs config dot json I will try to add I will update it based on the latest uh, so this is this these are the files you are going to test inside a test folder modules can be all these extensions test environment and we are using ts chest so we already have installed ts chest here so test setup is there in the dev uh, dependencies i again did mistake uh, okay because all these things whatever you are testing whatever you are compiling typescript and testing library prettier all these things that should be added as a dev dependency not as a dependency 
it should fix it okay because i don't have any code dependencies yet and then i can write a single test folder and can write my simple test so i will just copy from my so here we have simple we can say this is counter dot test dot tsx now here extension does matters somewhere you will do dot spec so what we are looking for dot test dot spec dot and dot tsx dot tsx so either you can have a dot spec dot tsx or dot test dot tsx okay this is my simple component that it should render we are importing it from source right and then it should be able to render it now we can just write a test script for package json to run the test so here i will do test so how you will execute it using npm run test uh, can't find root directory file path provide path to resolve just config.json do we have this thing okay i converted it to just config i mean there was a typo in the file it should be just config now we'll run this again it is running counter test so here just is a test runner and we are using test uh, react testing library for writing the tests for that component we can see react testing library is providing is the render function so with the render we are actually checking if this component when i'm using it it should be able to render so this is like a very basic test here i didn't any emulate or simulate any click events like click on to the button so the state should be plus one minus one a very basic setup uh, we have done here so if you see our package json we don't have any dependencies everything is added as a dev dependencies and our tests are passing so our package is kind of ready right we are able to see this now the important part here this thing so whenever you are building a package what you need to make sure that your package should be compatible for esm esm and cgs so i will put them here esm and cgs cgs is a common gs system these are the module system egs is a es6 now the name can be something else but this is like we are using for es6 where you are doing import export default common js where you are using require this is like es5 build system and here we are using require es5 and we do require i mean in the node js earlier we used to do the require a lot right so we need to make our package compatible for both the things so how we can do that that tweak we need to do in our uh build script so here we are doing a build so there are two type of build we can generate one is the simple build one is the build ejs and cgs esm and another is a cgs common js module system so here we need to pass the argument okay what is your module system you are going to use so i'm saying i'm using common js and out directory uh, i mean i need to check this in the documentation how it really works I can just create two folders pgs okay so when you are doing a simple build i can build both right so i can just say npm run build esm and and npm run build cjs i hope this is this thing is visible to everyone npm run build so when you do npm run build i should be able to do the build for both type of package system esm and cjs uh, let's try this thing see if it works npm run build okay and we'll look into dist folder and you can see there are two folders available cjs and esm cjs has a common js and esm is es6 package system so if you see the common js you will see how to how to import this component
this is a simple function and export dot default this is like a uh, common js way of importing exporting things right so this is cgs and this is esm both uh, module system is there so let's update our package scripts we'll just try to add okay there is a script prepare prepare means we are running a build and build this is how npm scripts are defined right you can invoke from one script to another so when you do npm run prepare it will do npm run build npm run build will do npm run build esm npm run build cgs okay and when you are going to publish so what we need to make sure that your code is formatted code is linked code uh, tests all are passing so you need to do uh, one script is pre-publish only so when you are doing a publish before that it will execute and what it is doing is npm run test it should execute npm run prettier and last step is npm run lint so we need to make sure that whatever we are shipping is of quality right now we can change the version version is 1.0.0 and main is index.js file we need to change it based on the module system because this will tell where is the root uh, type definition file is there or all right so main file will be inside dist folder dist esm there is index.js and types will be available in the esm so these things we define in uh, every package okay from where we can find the typings index dot d dot ts because you are going to use this either in the typescript package typescript uh, project then you need a typings also types module and we also need to provide a module like which module system it is following dist esm index dot js main is cgs so common js by default it's a common js and if you are looking for es6 then it is available in the esm index.js okay just repository basic steps now peer dependencies this is important part because we need to satisfy the peer dependencies okay when you are somebody is importing this package let's say you are building this package using some legacy version of react and whoever is consuming this this app is using react 16 or react 18 right and you have written a library in the react 16 or something right so there is a, always a compatibility in 16 and 18 that works but if you are using some previous version that's a problem so you need to declare explicitly okay peer dependency wherever you are using then the owner the project owner should be at least using react 16 that that is the minimum uh, check we need and the another thing is when we are bundling this package when you are doing npm run publish then what all files we wanted to push in the package not every not not modules not all the source code we just want only dist license and readme file nothing else nothing more than this because this contains our binary code like the typescript.tsx, the typing definitions and all these things. So we don't want to uh, take anything else. Now this is our uh, simple package JSON is ready. Now what we need to do is we need to follow the basic steps. We need to, I mean we are all already on the branch. So first I will try to publish it. So before that I need to do the login, npm login. So let me prepare that npm login. So this is a simple npm command npm login and i'm doing login to the github npm package registry okay my username is tk sharma and password is your github personal access token and this is how you can get the token i have already discussed the same thing in the last video write packages i mean it's already have an admin access i mean these permissions are optional but let's do this so I will generate a token and then I will use that as a password. So here I'm logged in uh, to the npm uh, github npm registry with this user. Now what I need to do, I need to basic steps npm publish and try to see. Uh, you can also do npm publish dry run. 
So let's do the dry run first. Okay, we got some error. Require statement. But why the lint is checking inside the dist folder? Okay, let's check our ESLint ignore. Oh, there is a typo here, you can see. It's ESLint ignore. Okay, now run this again. So dry run is just going to give us the overview what all things are happening. NPM, so it does the test, then lint, then prettier. And then this is how it will be. Right, now we can just do NPM publish. And we will publish our package. So we need to have everything git ignore is there, ESLint ignore. So I will just do npm publish. Okay, our package got published. Now let's take a look how it look like. So here you can see our package, react package, right? This is which I have recently pushed. And this is my readme file. I will try to update the documentation. But now when you are using it, you just need an npm rc file with a github token. Sorry, npm, to npm token. And this is how you can install it. Now I can change the tweak with the versions, change the functionality, all those things. And I can publish, let's say I will patch the minor version and do the npm publish again because I'm already logged in. I can keep publishing the versions based on the changes and I already have a tests running so I don't need to worry about any failure. Now how can we automate this thing? Let's say we are, you are running it as a github actions or CI pipeline. Let's take a look onto that. 